confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus and by a new living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward the love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. A sing together and can it be and really acknowledge the words that we sing and let it be your testimony today. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be that I should again have the interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who hid him to
me just read to you those famous lines in scripture of the resurrection. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake and for, uh, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now. I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Morning everyone. Well, this is a crazy sort of a morning. So uh, for those who are in the room or those that are at home, the, the hope, no, what are we calling them? Rumours and Zoomers, Gary. Rumours and Zoomers. Um, so just to uh, kind of put you in the picture, we arrived and turned all of the techie on like we would um, normally. Everything was marvellous and we turned it all on. Because we did that yesterday too. And we did the same yesterday and we thought, oh, the PC might need some updating so we'll make sure everything's good and uh, it was all wonderful. And turned it all on. Five minutes later, we, it sounded like um, Armageddon in here, to be fair. Um, and poor old Roger nearly burst into tears and... <laughs> and and uh, it was just horrendous. And, and it turns out, thanks to Mr. Alan Diamond, that uh, we have a, a, a blown fuse that is just. And it, it, I'm not kidding. If, if we had a defibrillator handy, I would have used it just to restart my. So, so there we are. Um, so we've, we've cobbled together the most horrendous uh, scene of <laughs> health and safety nightmares you could possibly imagine to get something going so we hope it's okay at home we, we're sorry we're a bit small yes um but, we need a but, cameraman but that is thing. what it is but we have managed to get in uh jill's wonderful um floral stuff that she's put together that isn't a real rock i did have a picture of jill trying to carry this giant rock to put at the foot of the cross but that's not a real rock she's a it's a pretend one it's loft insulation so jill's house is 50 percent less efficient um now it does um, look beautiful with the flowers though really. it, it certainly does but but um we are here this is probably not best of both but it is the best day of the year for me um easter sunday um you can keep christmas frankly um because when <laughs> you, we, we have this kind of incredible easter celebration that that we don't spend billions of pounds and going to loads of debt over um but we do have this opportunity even under these ridiculous circumstances to come together and to celebrate this my chains fell off yeah? yes my i have to keep not clap my hands because there's a microphone right there so so when jesus took his last breath the the curtain in the temple was ripped in two, and Ian and Stuart, you was marvellous. You were. Uh, ripping that temple, that temple curtain in two. If you didn't see that at home, because I'd forgotten to stop sharing screen at the time, so sorry, okay. Jen. <laughs> we might have to just kind of reenact that um, to, to put in the final video. But, <laughs> We've um, ripped but, it now. but the, it, the, the temple curtain was ripped in two, and this massive man made shield that was put up in the Holy of Holies in the temple, this incredible. Um, site that was kind of triple woven and it was just a, an immense piece of uh, fabric and um, ripped in two as jesus uh, uh, drew his last breath on the cross 
And Jesus had done it. He'd made it possible for all people to be in a relationship with him, not just a select few at a certain time of year, but everyone all of the time connecting with God in his holiest of states. Um, uh, no longer was it just set aside for um, one or two. And his resurrection, uh, Jesus died and rose again, not only so that we could receive forgiveness, but even more so, he died and rose again so that we might have life in Amen. all its fullness. And he said, didn't he, I've come to give it life in all its fullness. We know that as salvation is because there's a great song that we tap our toes to, but the immensity of those words, life that we'd never seen before. Um, and this resurrection amounts to the Father's clear signal that Jesus is the powerful Son of God who has conquered death and reigns as Lord of all. Amen. And, you, and we are allowed to say in the room, or hallelujah, or, whoop, 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 or whoop. anything, anything will do to kind of express that joy, the truth that comes with it. So this resurrection demonstrates that the blood of the new covenant, covenant, which um, Jesus spoke about and which was prophesied hundreds of years before, saves his people from their brokenness, their shame, their rejection of God's way. Amen. And Jesus makes a way for us to know the fullness of life that he promised he had come to give. So because Jesus came out of lockdown, Amen. we can too. The spiritual chains of... Where are you going? It's okay. The spiritual chains... Oh yeah, we had them ready up here the, the spiritual chains of sin need no longer bind us and if you kind of connect it with our good friday meditation uh, lorraine had fashioned chains around the cross um symbolizing um the things that bind us in this life which, which we have here which lorraine subtly and smoothly went to go and get so uh, temptation gone perfectionism guilt Shame, addiction, pride, self-pity, comparison, cowardice, lust, addiction, blame. They no longer need to bind us, friends. If they are currently binding us, they no, need no longer to do so any longer. God wants us to live life as he planned, full, beautiful, God-honouring. John 8, 36. There, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Romans 8, 1 to 2. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And James 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So to claim salvation, if anyone hasn't already done that here this morning or at home, um, we can do so. We must just submit ourselves. As Christ submitted himself uh, to the cross, we too do so. Uh, Psalm 51 can help us in that. Um, but it's not just the words we say. It's uh, what's going on in our heart. It's, kind of that sacramental expression of the inner goings on in our hearts um prayers like this one dear jesus thank you for dying on the cross for my sin please forgive me come into my life i receive you as my lord and savior now help me to live for you the rest of my life amen any of us can pray that prayer isn't that amazing we can all be forgiven for the big stuff, the little stuff, and in between stuff. And when I think of Jesus' life, and not only the demonstrations and his actions since Palm Sunday through to Friday, when we read of what he said and what he did, and how he tried to prepare his disciples and tried to show who he truly was to the crowds, he did so to make a difference to what they believed and what they lived out themselves. And then, of course, he died for that same purpose, so that people know him as the Son of God and we live with God properly. Then he miraculously rose again, Amen. and he said, as he said he would, and people were witnesses to that. Yet, there were some who still denied him. 
In Matthew 28, you get the guards report. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. After all Jesus did, they just had to confess they were wrong. But they lied more and thought they could justify it in some way. Today, of course, and sadly, it's still the same. People choose to deny Jesus. Confession is like too hard for them. And they take the easy route. And they tell themselves all kinds of justification that they don't need God. It's so sad. And it's so disappointing how it makes me feel uh, how it makes me feel sometimes cross but mostly deflated when I face those people and their excuses. They still can't see because of the thick veil they choose to wear over their eyes that they are wrong and life was created to be different from lies and deceit. It was created to be lived and mm -hmm. with God. For me, life alongside Jesus is so much better. Finish. So, what gives us hope then is um, that despite we live in a world where Jesus is still denied and his resurrection is not acknowledged by some, um, is to be offended on his behalf. Jesus went through all of that for the world, yet there are some who are still struggling. So um, he said, in, uh, continuing in Matthew 28, there's kind of final words that Matthew records of Jesus. Therefore, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations so that uh, they will believe who I am, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. His disciples continue to worship him, yet... I bet it was a worship time with such immense love and awe and deeper, more heartfelt than ever before because they had witnessed this miracle of the resurrection. Even some of his disciples had doubts, and we all know about doubting Thomas, um, but physical time spent with Jesus dispelled those doubts. Amen. Their doubts were their route to ultimate faith. Then he gives them the disciples job description for life to, to go into the world and make disciples don't just keep it to yourself tell someone tell them about me and how i'm their savior teach them to obey everything i have taught you and i will be with you to the very end of this age you don't have to have all the answers to share the life-giving story you just need to have met jesus once and seen a glimpse of the glory that came out of that cracked tomb amen jesus death and resurrection was not in vain all of us who have seen him and now uh, are now signposts and now have to share our testimony to the crowds today some will be saved we have to hope and believe some will reject the teaching but let's live out our job description as jesus disciples this beautiful song i Noah found. Just listen and think on these things. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Such beautiful truths sung beautifully too. Thank you, Sue. And on that good, wonderful news, uh, we're going to have a time of sharing. And I've asked two lovely people um, to share and answer some questions. And as they're answering, I wonder if you have an answer to the same question or something you're just desperate to share, then please do so in the chat those that are on Zoom. Those that are in the room, you just raise your hand. And when um, Rachel and Ian have sat down, we might see how we can um, hear what you've got to say. You'd have to come to here, so be brave. But let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, so I'll step back. And you can come to the mic. We're working this out. Okay, question number one to Ian and Rachel. You can decide who goes first. As living disciples of Jesus, have you experienced chains of sin falling off? At different times in my life, I've struggled with moments of guilt, moments of fear and worry. I know that I'm not alone in this, as the Bible tells us that many men and women had to be calmed by the words, fear not. I know that when I lay my fears and anxiety before the Lord, he already knows what I hide in my heart, and he longs to take away that fear. I can testify this morning that Jesus can break the chains of guilt and fear and gives me grace to trust him no matter what happens. Ah, well, I can testify this morning that my chains first fell off when I was 18, when, when I first asked God to live in my heart, and when I gave myself to him. But I think I have to stand in front of you this morning and explain that there are still chains. All the time there are chains, and those chains are from a particular sin, which I'm sure many of you share with me, which is the sin of putting self first. They're just that, because I feel that I'm having an okay time, my life's pretty good, I don't need to give everything to God. I don't need him in everything. And that, for me, makes Easter a really special time. I'm with Gary. You can keep Christmas, it's lovely. You can keep Pentecost, you know, that's quite uplifting. But at Easter, he gave everything for me. Oh, nice. and so I have to keep going deeper in my relationship with God. As I do that, those chains keep falling away. Thank you so much. I'm sure as you're saying that, the people at home uh, in, on Zoom and the people in the room can relate very much so. My next question to you both is, in his great commission, Jesus said, I will be with you always. Have you ever had periods of doubt or feeling that Jesus is not there anymore? There have been a few times in my life where I felt far from God. Um, for example, when my mum was diagnosed with cancer for the second time, and also when my dad um, was diagnosed with a tumour on the brain, which then presses on the optic nerve, meaning he, he's losing his sight gradually. But I realised that at these time, times, God gives us three things that to help us through our spiritual difficulties. First of all, he's given us the word of God, the spirit of God, and the people of God. And when I say the people of God, I mean my church family here and in Zoom um, as well. Um, when I don't know what to do, I turn naturally to prayer and learn to trust his word. He might not give the answer I'm looking for, but I can testify that he makes going through these kinds of things much easier. It's often when we look back that we can see that Jesus was beside us all the time and never left our side. Oh, no. Well, I think 
my answer to this question is a really simple one. Of course I have doubts all the time. Um, but then that's not my fault. Or rather, sorry, it's not God's fault. It is my fault. Um, just to emphasise that, it is my fault. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and it's because I don't put him first. Um, but, you know, it's, he just wants me to love him. And the more I do that, um, the less doubt me. Oh, and um, I think Easter is that boost when we actually really reflect on his act of love. That we really know what he did for us and how much he loves us. You can't help but love him back, I feel. That's how I feel. And my last question for you both is, in what ways will you be a signpost for Jesus, the saviour of all people here in Peterborough? I pray that God can use me to share the good news of the love of Jesus, his death and resurrection and what that means to us uh, with others, where it, whether it be through my work here day to day or with conversations with my family and friends or new people I meet through the community centre. This is life transforming news. I pray that God will help us all to share this news as widely and as often as possible. Amen. Ian, last Ooh. question. Yes, I, I, I honestly don't know how he's going to use me today, tomorrow. Um, uh, but I do know that having sort of taken on this new role for me as Corps Sergeant Major here at Peterborough Corps, there is going to be plenty of opportunity. Um, and I think the, the challenge for me is that I just need to love him more. And the deeper I go in that relationship with my Lord, the more I'll be able to reflect his love to other people. Thank you both so much. I'm just going to come forward and just um, thank God for your words, if that's all right. If you want to leave, um, you, you can, but I'm praying for you. Um, Father God, I just thank you for honest words. Uh, times of reflection that just help us see us in, in, in relationships with you. And Lord, sometimes we think we haven't done so well, but yet other times, Lord, we look back and we think, wow, you're incredible and you were definitely part of my life. We thank you, God, for your promise that you are with us always. And as your disciples, I pray, Father God, that we have full faith in you. And Lord, even if it's just a little bit of faith, you can do amazing things with it. And so, Lord, I thank you for that truth that I am certain of. Amen. Amen. Thank you both. You're amazing. And I do hope you all heard that. Um, uh, we, we are having difficulties with the microphones, maybe, but uh, we've done our best. I hope it's not too aggravating. We have... Uh, a song that we could not not use. Have I said that right? We, we needed to use it today. And it's just going to be so much more awesome, this song. So the rumours, you can stand and clap and dance. In fact, I give permission. It has to be strictly no more than six. But if you find a clear space in this room, away from others like probably up here, um, then I will allow those six people to sing. You have to do it together. We are allowed, are we, is it not yet? Oh, flip. Sorry, take that all back. The date's not right. Sorry, in a week or so you can. Sorry, okay, just imagine. And uh, those at home, you can sing the, to the tops of your voices. Oh, boundless salvation. It's a good one.
I believe Tony was waving his flag. I could have waved my mask. Um, okay. We're about to finish. We're about to finish. Amen. But before, yes, amen in the room. What we're about to do, first of all, is listen to this amazing poem that was put together uh, for today by someone from another church that I'm not sure of, UK, but um, it's so good. It was sent to me by Margot um, yesterday on, uh, on WhatsApp or something. But I just thought, actually, it, it, it's, it's beautiful. So... What? We're, we're just going to do announcements before we do that. Okay. Just to suck the life out of everything. Oh. Um, just they're really, really boring, but we are functional this week, just to so let you know that the prayer meeting's happening. Lent study series obviously finished last week. Yes. So, so that, that isn't this Thursday. And then next week will be hopefully best Functioning. of both in, in the better sense of the word. So, so, yes. um, so, uh, but if you are intending to come on Sunday, um, then you are welcome. But you just need to let us know you're coming. Um, either uh, text, email, phone call, uh, smoke signals, um, Morse code, anything will do. Um, just to let us know you're coming. So we just uh, keep a tabs on um, who's coming. Um, so let us know. So next Sunday, ten thirty on Zoom in person your choice okay yeah read your newsletters everybody now we'll have that beautiful poem and uh, just watch this okay let's go freddie once sang that he wants to break free that pretty much captures the mood you'll agree no hugs haircuts or holidays for over a year the pubs and shops shut no raucous cheer of fans at the game, of kids at school. Stay home, mask on, two-metre rule. But the lockdowns, the measures, they're not without cause. They've been there because death just will not pause. It's assault on us all through this miserable virus. Death is the reason they've had to require us to not see our family or friends for so long. It's death that's the problem. That's what's gone wrong. So here, then, is the issue you see. When all this is over, when they say, you are free, when we rip off our masks and we hug once again, when we dance and we sing and we gather with friends, I can't wait. But hold on, because despite no restrictions, death hasn't gone. Virus or not, death wins the day, which kind of dampens our hip hip hooray. Unless, unless there was a way which we could be free from even the grip of death's tyranny. But how? You may ask, can we beat the Grim Reaper? Well, that is the wonderful message of Easter. Jesus, Son of God, came to earth as a man. The Word became flesh. It was always God's plan. And the reason he came was to die for our sin, to swap places with us so that we could begin the life we were made for, free from our shame. At the cross, Jesus took on himself all our blame, the perfect one coming to die in our place so that for all who trust him, they're given God's grace. But the message of Easter doesn't end there. Jesus died, he was buried, but no one could prepare for what happened next. He rose from the dead. Meaning death no longer has to fill us with dread because on that Easter Sunday, Jesus broke free. He rose from the grave so that if you believe that Jesus died in your place and then rose, then listen to this, here's how it goes. You too no longer have to fear death whenever it is that you take your last breath, because Jesus has beaten it. Here's your guarantee. Come to Jesus this Easter, believe, and be free. And shall we pray uh, a benediction for us all to leave what we're doing, this meeting, and be courageous to take on the, the courage and the bravery like Jesus, to really be his disciples and do the job of making new ones, to concentrate, to not have fear or distractions or anything else. We are people that have been forgiven and we can be free and share with others our testimony. 
Amen. May we do that all today. You can say goodbye. Bye in the room. Um, if you want to come say bye, just need to be in shot. See ya. Bye. 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 Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter!